Hello and welcome to Inside Healthcare. COVID cases continue to drop as more than 70% of people in Minnesota are now vaccinated. So you might wonder why are you and others you know getting sick right now? You might be surprised by what is causing it. Here is Dr. Rob Anderson with the Urgency Room. Dr. Rob Anderson with the Urgency Room, glad to see you back on Inside Healthcare. You know, and um, what sorts of personal habits are people doing right now and have been doing during the pandemic that are maybe causing some health issues for them? It's a good question, Jody. You know, what we've seen over the past year and a half with the COVID pandemic is people picked up some habits. And actually, to be fair, some people picked up some really good habits. Um, you know, I've, some of my colleagues um, I certainly talked to several patients who picked up really good habits of, you know, exercising more, trying to eat better and really use this time to try to work on their health. But, you know, at the same time, we've also seen some people who have picked up maybe some bad habits, you know, whether by choice and just not knowing how to deal with things and eating more poorly or exercising less. But sometimes just out of how our routines have changed, people's habits changed as well. So if somebody before is, you know, walking out to their car and then they'd walk into the office, you know, and a, a long walk from the parking garage to the office. And if they had to use a the bathroom, they'd have to walk out of the office, down the hall to the bathroom. So they just got so many more steps in. But being at home, people, you know, are going from their bedroom to their office or to their kitchen to do their work. work. And they're just not working as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you know, that by you know default is maybe some bad habits of not walking as much and people are becoming deconditioned, you know, not eating as healthy and it affects their overall health, not only their physical health, but also just their well-being. And you know, fortunately is it appears that we're kind of getting out of this pandemic and things are continuing to taper off. Um, you know, I think some people are starting to change some of those habits. And some of that poor diet and lack of exercise can cause high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Is that some of the things that you're saying? And why is it important to get your blood pressure um, um, checked? And I go, well, you know, I'm thinking it, I guess it's been a while since I've got mine too, yeah. you know? Yeah, you know, that's a lot of people aren't able to go into the clinic necessarily, you know, during the peak of the pandemic, uh, things were closed. People are having to check their blood pressure at home. Um, certainly a lot of dietary changes if we're having more salt in our diet, not exercising, our blood pressure does go up. And sometimes we feel that. Sometimes we feel that with just a little bit of chest pain or a headache. And, you know, that's a sign of high blood pressure. It can be also a sign of, you know, a heart attack or a stroke or something else going on, you know, in the brain as well. So um, it's important to monitor your blood pressure. And, you know, if your blood pressure continues to be a little bit elevated, you know, that's a good opportunity and a good time to go in to see your family doctor and or your your internist and get on a blood pressure medicine or your cardiologist and sometimes people check their blood pressure at home and they go oh my goodness it's you know 200 over 150 and those are really high numbers and in situations like that we do encourage people to come in to see us at the urgency room we can confirm if that blood pressure is high or not and in addition if you're having some chest pain with that if you're having a heart attack or tingling down your arm or leg we can do those tests to, to see if it is a heart attack, to see if it is a stroke. We can do that EKG. We can do the blood test to see if it is a heart attack. We can mm -hmm. do the stroke and work up. And, um, and if, if you need emergent treatment, we have different processes set up with some of our wonderful stroke centers to get you in right away. And what would be some of the signs that um, you need to be tested for maybe diabetes that may have developed during this um, pandemic as well? And why is this so important yeah. to get tested for that? Yeah, and, indeed. I mean, certainly with the, the dietary changes that we've had, eating more sugar, you know, I have that extra bowl of ice cream before bed sometimes. And, you know, <laughs> having too much sugar in our diet, not enough exercise, you know, our blood sugars go up, our pancreas stops putting out the insulin and our body is resistant to it. And there's actually a unique blood test that they can do in the family practice clinic or in the internal medicine clinic that actually looks at what your blood sugar has been over the past three months. And that gives us a really good idea if you have diabetes or not, or sometimes when it gets to borderline, we'll say, you know, you're kind of pre-diabetic. Um, and in those situations, you know, it's good to, to see your doctor, to have that test, to consider being put on some medications to try to help um, control your blood sugars. And certainly at the urgency room, we do have patients come in every now and then, and they have signs of just, you know, fulminant diabetes that they didn't know they had. And they're just peeing so often, they're drinking just tons of water, you know, more so than what, what's normal. And, and we do some blood tests and we determine, 
goodness, they're in, they have really bad diabetes and it affects their, their chemistries of, the, uh, of their bloodstream. And they're in a condition called diabetic ketoacidosis. And so we can make that diagnosis when you're in that extreme at the urgency room, we can start the fluids and insulin and we can arrange for a direct admission to the hospital if you even need that. Um, or if you're borderline and kind of wondering if you have it, we can still do all that testing as well um, at, uh, at our three facilities in Egan, Woodbury and Badness Heights. And so important because undiagnosed can cause heart disease. You can blindness, um, um, limb amputation and things yeah, like that. So I right. know it's so serious. So not to ignore it. What about alcohol? A lot of people I've been hearing have said they've been drinking a lot of alcohol, you know, and what kinds of problems is that causing? Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's a whole realm of things that because <laughs> of it. Maybe in particular in the GI symptoms and kind of thing. Certainly. Yeah. So, you know, unfortunately, I have to say that um, during this past year and a half, I have seen more people than I have in the past just coming in actually with fulminant liver failure um, just because they've been at home. Some have been un unemployed or even employed and just started drinking at home on a daily basis. And um, they come in because their skin is turning yellow. We call it jaundice or the whites of their eye are turning yellow. We call that scleral ictris. And, and when we see that, that's actually a sign that your liver is not working very well. Um, so that's, you know, the one extreme just with chronic drinking can actually cause some pretty bad liver problems. And very frankly, even, even young people sometimes die from drinking too much alcohol on a regular basis. Um, it certainly can affect our behavior, our mood, our sleep. Um, as well, even drinking, you know, limited amounts. Um, it affects how people sleep. It can cause increased acid production in the stomach and really upset the stomach. Um, so we people, see people coming in just with GI upset and saying, you know, I don't understand why my stomach hurts. And, you know, alcohol can be contributory towards that for people who have regular, you know, upper abdominal pain. It can cause pancreatitis, uh, certainly seeing uh, many people who have come in just drinking on a regular basis and they come in with this, you know, upper abdominal pain, their stomach is just, you know, hurting like crazy. And, you know, we can do the blood test to see if you have pancreatitis, that would be an elevation in the lipase is the blood test. Um, and sometimes just, you know, normal heartburn uh, as well. So lots of different things can happen from drinking alcohol. And unfortunately, sometimes, you know, some, some people during this pandemic uh, started drinking more. Some people drink less and Certainly we, you know, I always encourage uh, drinking if you choose to drink just in, in moderation. Really good advice there. So if someone has um, other advice you might have from people that might have some of these symptoms or signs of some of these health issues, what should they be doing? Yeah, you know, I, I always tell patients to, to trust your instincts, trust your gut. You know, if you think something maybe is going on, you're not super worried, you know, maybe talk to a friend, talk to a family member and, you know, it'd be a good time to just call your doctor, set up an appointment with your doctor, your, your pediatrician for your kid. But if your instinct, your gut says, I feel like something's a little bit worse than normal. And that's what we are here there uh, at the urgency room for, for patients. You know, we're in Egan, Vadness Heights and Woodbury. We're open from 8 a.m. until 10 p.m. We also have a, a virtual option as well. And patients come in all the time, you know, wondering what's going on. And, you know, sometimes it turns out to be nothing. And oftentimes I tell patients, you know, I, I hope I'm wrong. You have really bad crushing chest pain right now. I hope I'm wrong. I hope it's not a heart attack, but we're going to do the EKG. We're going to do the blood test. We're going to make sure it's not a heart attack. We're going to do a blood test to make sure it's not a blood clot and get an x-ray. I hope everything comes back normal. But when patients feel like something more is going on, I totally advise them to come in we're um, emergency providers. I'm an emergency physician. That's who we are at the urgency rooms. And you know, if people have concern, if they're wondering, um, I just totally encourage them to, to get it checked out. It's um, not worth staying at home and worrying for days on end and have something bad happen. You know, if, if you're worried, have it checked out. We do have a new virtual platform as well. If I could just quickly say that as well, it's a really nice option to see an emergency provider a lot of things can be um, taken care of just over a nice video visit, just kind of like we're doing. And we also have the very unique ability through our facility that if you're concerned for strep throat, there's different criteria that we can use to have a conversation over a video visit like this, but we can also actually have the same conversation and do the definitive test. So you can have the conversation, video visit, come in, just do a quick swab of the throat and leave. 
And then you can get a, a notification if the strep test is positive and antibiotics are sent to the pharmacy for you. If it's negative, then you don't need the antibiotics or a basic urine test. And of course, we can still do COVID tests as well. Well, as always, great advice and a pleasure to have you with us on Inside Healthcare. Thank you, Dr. Rob Anderson with the Urgency Room. Thank you, Jody. It's good to see you again. You pledged your life to serve. You made sacrifices, lost loved ones. At VA, we don't see the falls you've taken. We see the thousand times you've stood back up. We embrace your uniqueness and won't trivialize your hardships. We can't promise to heal all wounds or wash away all trauma, but we do see a path forward. We see all veterans. We see you. Learn how treatment works and recovery is possible. Visit maketheconnection.net. Earlier this year, we told you about a new type of healthcare clinic called the Good Clinic that has opened its first nationwide clinics here in the Twin Cities. Here is nurse practitioner Kim Young to tell us all about it and what makes this clinic so different than others. What is the Good Clinic all about for people who aren't familiar with it? What makes it different than your typical clinic? Sure, sure. So the Good Clinic is primary care. So we are defined by our care as given by nurse practitioners. So nurse practitioner delivered primary care. So we do anything and everything you can think of primary care in addition to wellness planning. The foundation of all of our care here is developing a relationship with a patient where they really guide their care. Um, they, they empower it, they are the driver. We give them the tools to make them the healthiest that they can be. It's, it's founded in wellness. We offer wellness planning visits and would love for every one of our patients to have their own wellness plan that lives and breathes with them throughout their changes of their life to help them be their healthiest self. What are some of those tools that you use at the clinic that um, you help with the client develop their wellness plan and things? And how is that different than like when I go see a primary care uh, doctor at the clinic that I might be currently going to? Absolutely. So one of the things, as you can see behind me, is we offer supplements here and essential oils. So we offer um, and some over-the-counter medication, too. So we do offer kind of an East meets West mentality, so that wellness holistic focus. The wellness planning visit that we offer really revolves around the tools that it takes to have a person meet the four um, pillars, if you will, of good health. So activity level, um, we're screening folks, what's your activity level? How can we help you there? What's your stress like? How can we help you there? How's your nutrition? Do we need to work on balancing maybe your macronutrients or, or work with you with diet or something like that? Um, <clears throat> how are you sleeping? Uh, all of those quality of life type of things because all of those things are really important to even if a person is well without medical diagnoses or if they have medical diagnoses and they need you know to really focus on the lifestyle some people that are so hyper focused on a medical diagnosis might not really be thinking about their diet or how they're sleeping they're just hyper focused maybe on their medication this opens the door to look at all things lifestyle for them and we look at the whole patient as far as what's their ability to have good sleep uh, what what kind of access do they have to uh, nutrition and those type of things you know what kind of a role does um, your nutrition play into your sleep habits and things like that i know i sleep well but my husband he could use some help for sure <laughs> <laughs> so much. So sleep is the foundation. I mean, if you're not sleeping well, really nothing else is going to work as well as it should, <clears throat> excuse me, in your body. So nutrition plays a really big role. So we work with patients on educating them on, first of all, what are, what the heck is a macronutrient and a micronutrient and why do I need them? So, you know, just like your car runs better when you put the right kind of gas in and you're keeping the good oil in and the oil changes and those things and keeping it running, it's the same thing with your body. So what you put in your body affects everything, including how you sleep. Um, so really just looking at what a person's intake is, are they way off balance with their nutrients? Do we need to bring that into a balance? And then what's their stress level like? So really all those things work together, stress level, what they're eating, are they drinking water? Are they drinking pop all day? <laughs> uh, so many factors. Um, even in, including, you know, are, are they deficient on certain nutrients? For example, magnesium 
is a nutrient that a lot of folks are a little bit deficient on. It's a micro deficiency. So they could take a lab test and it's going to not really show much. But when we supplement them with a little bit of magnesium at night before sleep, they end up sleeping better. They end up having less cramps. They end up, you know, if they're kind of a muscle crampy type person, um, it's actually something that is for patients that have, you know, chronic migraines to take my, to take magnesium at, at, at night as a routine before bed. It's just a nutrient, but we can't get it as easily from our diet as some other nutrients. So I hope that kind of helps paint the picture there. Yeah, absolutely. So if someone wants to get more information or maybe make an appointment, how do they go about doing that? And, and just a little bit about where are you located as far as the good clinic? Yeah, sure. So we are located at 307 First Avenue uh, Northeast in Minneapolis in the Nordhaus building right now. Um, and, and so we have other locations coming up. We'll be in Eden Prairie soon, um, hopefully by the end of the summer at the Elevate uh, building complex. And mm -hmm. then we're looking at uh, also uh, opening in St. Louis Park either later this summer or early this fall. So we have a few locations. The easiest way to find us is thegoodclinic.com. And that's our website. So we really um, like folks to visit our website because they can learn so much about us, including um, get the phone number to schedule an appointment. Once we get you in for the first time, uh, you get access to our portal where our patients can schedule online. They can have telehealth visits. Uh, they can have phone visits. Uh, really flexible to meet the patient where they're at. We know pe people have very busy lives and we wanna meet them where they're at. Well, Kim, it's been a pleasure to have you on Inside Healthcare. Thank you. Thanks. Last week, Brandon met a girl on a dating app. One day after work, he finally found the courage to ask her out. No answer. He started to panic. Was he being too pushy? Maybe it was too... Hey, sorry I didn't respond. I was driving. I would love to go on a date. How does tonight sound? Brandon tried to play it cool, but inside he knew. A girl so smart, so responsible. She must be a keeper. During COVID, many fitness centers closed their doors. And fitness and nutrition experts like Rachel Larson and her sister Alice Halverson started creating virtual or on-demand classes or one-on-one -on -one workouts. We're pleased to have joining us by Zoom, Rachel and Alice. And Rachel may be a familiar face to our regular viewers of Inside Healthcare. She has been on our show several times over the past 16 years. So we're glad to have you back on the show. Recently, I took part in one of Rachel's pop-up yoga bar classes at a local park. So Rachel, just tell us a little bit about that. We believe that building a healthy community and building relationships are foundational to our overall health. And being that flow state is virtual, live and on-demand classes. It's our way to reach out and connect with people in person and to, to really build connection that we need, that we all need for our well-being. For those that may not be familiar, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and then Alice right after that, why don't you tell us about you? Yeah, well, I'll try to keep it short. I could talk about, I get really excited about fitness and, and wellness. My background is as a registered licensed dietitian and certified personal trainer, yoga, Pilates, corrective exercise, a few other things. Um, I've been working in this field for quite some time and my biggest passion and drive is to help people understand how to manage their muscles, manage their bodies through exercise, through movement, so that they can feel better, move better, and do all of the things that they want to do. And I get so excited about it. So that's that's what's my background. And Alice? Awesome. Yeah. So um, well, I grew up kind of, so Rachel's my sister, of course, I grew up kind of uh, doing all the sports that she did and, and just loving every second of it. Um, we had a ton of fun together, but, um, my, my background actually is in marketing and advertising. So I did a little bit more of that route and then found my way into fitness just because it was my passion. Um, after I had my first child. So I'm sure some of your viewers can relate to that, just making a little career shift. And I made the move to become a personal trainer. Uh, group fitness instructor, and then I've gotten uh, nutrition certifications and other, you know, of course, education along the way. But um, I love motivating people. I love seeing people just thrive through movement and exercise and just how they just light up when they 
learn a new skill when they master something, when they just feel better in their body. So that's really, really important to me. So I, I love it. You know, and flow state is very exciting. It's one of those new virtual, you know, um, on-demand type of class. And why don't you tell us a little bit more about what, what is it all about? What is flow state? Started flow state in January and it was a, it was a launch in response to the passion I already shared about how really wanting to educate and equip people with, with the kind of exercise that they really need. And flow state is all about movement that matters and helping, um, again, educate while we move in ways that feels good and helps connect people with the joy of movement in a way that is inclusive and accessible. And um, well, you don't have to beat yourself up to get fit and feel great. And so we, we, we have a blast. And, and of course it's on demand and live classes. We also have routine challenges. In fact, we're in the middle of a 21 days to toned legs challenge. And back in May, we did a 21 days to arms challenge with very balanced, very impactful exercise along with those key stretches and myofascial release to keep people really feeling their best. Yeah, I know just doing that yoga in the park is like, oh, I need to get back into this. I am so out of <laughs> shape. I could feel it. Absolutely. And then, Alice, what, what are some of the things that you do with Flow State? Yeah, so with Flow State, um, I do a lot of just strength classes, core classes, um, just, you know, kind of foundational um, cardio and strength and core moves that just like Rachel said, just it, movement that matters and movement that helps bodies feel good, right? This isn't gonna be the, the craziest workout ever, uh, but educating as we go and just getting people stronger, more mobile, having fun while they're working out. Um, so yeah, cardio, core, strength, we've kind of got that kind of well-balanced routine um, going on at Flow State. So it's really fun. So someone who may not be familiar with doing an on-demand or virtual type of class, how does that work, you guys? Oh, well, it's, it's actually easier than you would think. From your computer or from your phone, when you're logged in to Flow State, and, and we could even, Jody, if you wanted, bring up our website for people to peek at, but really it's, it's little um, squares that have an image of the workout along with the duration and the title. And once you're logged in, you just scroll around. What do I want? I want a bar class. I want a yoga class. I want a cardio class. They're all in categories. You just click on it, opens up, click one more time and your, and your workout is playing. And it's, it's pretty slick. It's pretty simple stuff. And then with live classes, you sign up for the classes that you want to attend by scrolling again, grabbing which class you want, clicking a button, you get an automatic link and we use Zoom and everyone's familiar with Zoom now. So you get an automatic um, reminder that you have your appointment and your Zoom link. And then when it's time for class, you just jump right in and you're ready to go. And how many classes are you currently offering then? We're Zoom offering classes? six classes a week, six wow. to seven classes a week, depending on the week. And those are just our live classes. And of course our on-demand, we have I don't even know how many classes we have on that now. We keep adding more, but many, many options. And I noticed that the, the, the yoga and the park too, that um, you're offering a couple of free classes to get introduced. Yes, to thank you so. for drawing attention to that because that's always the right price, isn't it? So with <laughs> our with our yoga in the park and and other and other activities, we do like to have monthly in-person outdoor events when the weather permits and we've done outdoor walks and for the last few months with Woodbury Thrives in partnership with Woodbury Thrives we've been doing um, yoga in the park and the last one was yoga and bar in the park and it's yes like you said it's a great way to connect with people and provide a free and very inclusive and accessible resource for our community because that's also very important to us. I know when we're talking about live events you have a live um event coming up here. Why don't you tell us about that? It's live, brave, 5K. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, yeah. Our live brave 5K. Yeah. So just kind of, um, doing a, a bigger thing in the community. So I am planning and coordinating a 5K event in Woodbury on August 14th. It's called the live brave 5K and it's 
right around um, part of Kobe Lake. So kind of right in the heart of Woodbury, we're, are, we're familiar with our pop-up yoga in the park is, is kind of right close to that area. We'll be running right by where we were there. Uh, but yeah, this 5K is uh, gonna be really fun. We just wanna bring the community together um, for a fun athletic outdoor event. Um, there's not a lot of them. You know, we've been deprived with COVID. So, you know, getting together is really important and it benefits a great cause. So the cause is definitely close, close to my heart. Um, and having my own my own children, and then my co-race director is a cross country and track coach here for Woodbury. So he deals right with he deals with youth every day. He's a coach, so he sees some of this playing out as well in our community. So it's just it's an, an important cause for both of us. Um, and so I think it's it's time to kind of rally around that cause and bring the community together for you know a really great athletic event. And you know doing doing physical movement is so important for our mind and our body. And so that was really an important part of kind of my recovery, um, moving and exercising. It really helped help me recover as well. Well, good for you, Alice, for championing that and, and taking that on, so good for you. Final comments, um, Rachel, about to our viewers on if they're interested in um, taking a class or anything like that, what, what advice would you have for them on trying to survive the rest of the summer now that COVID is kind of in the, our rear view mirror and stuff. Oh, goodness. Well, I heard two questions in one. Yeah, Number I know. one, if you're interested in flow state and you want to learn a little bit more, we do have uh, we do have a Facebook page. We do have Instagram if you're on social media. So you can do a little surfing and learn a little bit more about us. But our website is theflowstate.com and you put in th e so the flowstate.com and pretty much at this point if you if you just google flow state fitness will pop right up and and we have a two week free trial so anyone who wants to jump in and experience flow state for for two weeks before any payments kick in that's a it's a fantastic option you can also email us if you're just thinking i want to learn a little bit more you can email us info at the flowstate.com and literally, they can live anywhere in the country to any well or anywhere in the world. Really, in the world. time zones work out for those live videos. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Well, Rachel, such a pleasure to have you back on Inside Healthcare and to see you again. So thank you so much, and thank so you. nice to have you with us as well, Alice. Pleasure to have you with us. So thank you both. And Great. thank you so much. Take care. Thanks, yes, Jody. Thanks, Jody. Well, that is our program for you. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time on Inside Healthcare. We'll see you then, everyone.